Have you ever watched Lord of the Rings? Good, because this RON scene is one of the few examples I'm going to use to demonstrate that your OLED TV is not bright enough. In my previous videos talking about the higher peak brightness on the LG G1 OLED EVO and the Sony A90J Master Series OLED, some of you commented that your OLED TV is already bright enough, so you don't see any need for higher peak brightness. To explain why this line of thought is misguided, I set up two calibrated LG CX or C10 OLED televisions side by side, and purposely lowered the HDR peak brightness on one of them to 400 nits, while letting the other CX naturally max out its peak brightness at 650 nits, both with dynamic tone mapping disabled. Using the custom tone curve upload function in Kalman calibration software, I made sure the 400 nit OLED tracked the ST2084 PQ standard. That's the yellow line here, as closely as possible until roll off at around 250 nits. So we have a calibrated 400 nit OLED on your left, and a calibrated 650 nit OLED on your right. Let's see how this 250 nit difference in peak brightness affects the HDR presentation of the 4K Blu ray of The Fellowship of the Ring, which is apparently graded to roughly 600 nits according to the metadata read by this Panasonic UB9000 4K Blu ray player. As expected, the majority of scenes look similar on both TVs, since they fall below 250 nits. The threshold at which both TVs were still tracking PQ as closely as possible before starting to roll off. However, in this sequence where Arwen first revealed herself, you can see more bright detail on the 650 nit OLED, whereas they went missing on the 400 nit OLED. A similar result can be seen in this fade from white transition as Frodo recovered. The pattern on his shirt was more visible on the 650 nit OLED compared to the 400 nit one. Next, as the Fellowship climbed the snowy mountain pass and Frodo dropped the ring, if we freeze frame here, the 650 nit OLED presented more detail in the snow mountains behind Frodo than the 400 nit OLED. Last but not least, let's check out the shot of Galadriel. If we pause it here, hopefully you can see that more bright highlights were preserved on her dress on the 650 nit OLED, whereas they appeared blown out on the 400 nit OLED. So what can we conclude from all these scenes from just one HDR movie? As you can see for yourself, a higher peak brightness is not only about brightness per se, it allows for better preservation of bright HDR detail to accurately reproduce the creator's intent. Let me explain why this is. If you look at this EOTF or Electro Optical Transfer Function chart here, the yellow line is the reference ST2084 PQ standard used for HDR10 and Dolby Vision content. Now, PQ stands for Perceptual Quantization, and there are two words in the term, Perceptual and Quantization. The central concept of PQ is to maximize code value bit efficiency for how our human eyes perceive light. So this yellow line here actually signifies the threshold at which the difference between two digital signal code values can be perceived as a difference in light output to our eyes. That's the perceptual component of PQ. Without introducing significant posterization, that's the quantization component of PQ. So anytime the EOTF tracking of a display goes above this yellow line, you risk introducing posterization, but when the EOTF tracking drops below this yellow line, the brightness detail starts to get compressed and become invisible, because that's how the perceptual quantization curve has been designed. Fortunately, Due to limitations in display technologies, even on grading monitors costing tens of thousands of pounds, little to no HDR content is mastered to the full 10,000 nits allowed by PQ. The majority of HDR10 movies are graded to 1,000 nits, probably using the Sony X300 RGB OLED reference monitor, although a not insignificant number of titles are mastered to 4,000 nits using the Unicorn Dolby Pulsar monitor which is only available on lease or loan directly from Dolby. So no, 650 or 700 nits of peak brightness on current consumer OLED TVs is not enough to accurately reproduce the true creative intent of HDR content, not only in terms of brightness, but also in terms of detail. Of course, you can use the dynamic tone mapping function on LG OLED TVs to retain all specular highlight detail, 
but this will also lower the average picture level or overall brightness of the scene, again deviating from artistic intent, making what's supposed to be a sunny day look more like an overcast, cloudy afternoon. OLED TVs are also handicapped by ABL or Automatic Brightness Limiter circuitry, so even though they may be capable of a peak brightness of around 700 nits on a 10% window, full screen brightness will drop to 150 nits or even lower. Here, we have a Vizio OLED and a Sony XH90 or X900H LED LCD side by side, both 55 inches in screen size, both calibrated to track PQ as closely as possible on a 10% window. If we play this scene from the Fellowship of the Ring again, you can see that the LED LCD was able to go brighter and deliver more HDR impact, reproducing the brightness portion of the creative intent in a more accurate manner. Don't get me wrong, I still admire the pixel level light control afforded by OLED's self emissive characteristics, allowing dark scenes to be expressed accurately without any hallowing or blooming artifacts. But I also recognize the full field brightness limitations of the technology and have mentioned this on many occasions in my previous videos. Although bright scenes would appear less impactful than high nit LED LCDs due to ABL restrictions, bright HDR scenes looked significantly more impactful on the Samsung QE55 Q95T QLED TV, while its extra luminous headroom allowed highlight detail to be expressed in a clearer manner than the LG OLED 55CX. One advantage LED LCDs such as this TCL X10 holds over OLEDs is full screen brightness. Since OLED is restricted by ABL or Automatic Brightness Limiter circuitry, which is designed to protect the panel. So hopefully with all the examples given in this video, you can understand why I'm so excited about this year's new, more efficient OLED panel from LG Display that can achieve up to 20% higher brightness full screen on the LG G1 and the Sony A90J, all without increasing the risk of OLED burn-in. It allows video enthusiasts to get closer to accurate reproduction of the HDR creative intent by applying as little tone mapping as possible. Of course, a 20% increase is not much, but it is a start, and just like the Brexit deal that the UK government had agreed to, something is always better than nothing. For 100% accurate, 1-1 one -one reproduction of the PQ curve, the holy grail is a 4000 nit display, but that remains out of reach for even the most advanced LED LCD TVs once you calibrate them to the industry standard of D65 white point. Note that all this talk of the importance of peak brightness is mainly for HDR or high dynamic range content. For SDR, I'm sure most OLEDs are bright enough, unless you stay in an apartment with floor to ceiling windows in Dubai. If you would like to watch more videos on 2021 televisions, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I'll see you in the next video.